What's up, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome to a multi-part series. All of these videos in the series are stuck together in one complete full guide, which you'll find linked in the description down below, as well as the other episodes that I've split it up into. This whole mini series shows you how to install and set up key paths for Windows and Android, get them to sync together using SyncThing, as well as set up autofill on your Android phone and your desktop using Chrome, Firefox, and other browsers. If you're interested, check the description down below. This video in particular targets installing KeyPass on Android and setting up SyncThing on Android as well as your computer to get them to sync the KeyPass database, showing your passwords back and forth between your Android phone and your PC. Let's go ahead and install it on our mobile device. So, KeyPass DX. You can install this either through FDroid or the Google Play Store. I'd recommend FDroid, but of course it's everywhere. And of course you can check the repository link over here to see if you actually trust it being open source and all that goodness. Here it is here, KeyPass DX. Same goes for SyncThing, which we can head across to the downloads tab at the very top, then find the Android link for Google Play and FDroid, and you'll see it here. Once again, you can also check the code at the very top, followed by SyncThing and SyncThing Android. Yes, we'll be downloading this on both devices. Anyways, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's download KeyPass DX and SyncThing on our Android device. For this, I'll be remote controlling my Android device, and if you're interested, there'll be a link on how to do this in the description down below. I'd highly recommend you install this directly from your browser on your computer, otherwise make sure you're downloading the correct one. So, KeyPass DX, and we'll also search for and install SyncThing, the biggest one over here. Install. Now, of course, this can take some time to install depending on your device setup. In the meanwhile, let's go ahead and install SyncThing on our desktop computer. Having the server installed on our computer and on our phone lets them talk to each other and sync our password file. So, on the same SyncThing download page, we'll scroll down to Base SyncThing, then simply download x64 Windows or, of course, whatever else you're running it on. Open up the zip and we'll be extracting this folder here to somewhere secure on your computer. Once again, I'd recommend keeping a backup of this, just in case. Though it's nowhere near important as backing up your actual passwords database file. For this, I'll be placing it in a folder right next to my KeyPass XC folder, where my passwords database file is inside of it. I'll simply call it SyncThing. I'll extract all of the files into this folder here. Nice and simple. Then I'll open up SyncThing.exe. Now you may panic when you see a window that looks like this, but don't worry, a browser should open up. You can choose whether you'd like to allow anonymous reporting. I'll allow it, and you'll see this. To begin, we need to set up a username and password to allow access to this GUI. I'll click Settings on the right-hand side, then head across to GUI at the top, and enter a username and password here. I'll enter, say, Techno, and a good password there. This is only accessing this GUI on your local computer. I'll go ahead and leave the theme as, say, Dark, and I'll save it. Upon doing so, we'll need to log in. And there we are. So to actually sync a folder between our computer and our mobile device, we need to add it to the folders list here. I'll click Add Folder, give it a name, such as say, Key Pass, enter a folder ID, which we'll also need to enter on our mobile device, and create a folder there with the same ID. So I'll also make this Key Pass, no capitals. Then the folder path should be the path of our Key Pass folder with the Key Pass database inside of it. So for me, that's this one over here. I'll copy the text at the top, paste it in here, and we can go ahead and check these other tabs, but you don't really need to. There's versioning, if you'd like, though we won't really be using that here. And ignoring patterns for different files and folder structure inside of it, if you have multiple different files in the folder. Though for this, we're only syncing a password folder. Head across to the advanced section at the top, and you'll see folder type. Make sure that this is send and receive. So you can edit passwords on your computer, have them sync to your phone, and you can add passwords on your phone, have them sync back to your computer. I'm not too sure what would happen if you add something on both devices at the same time, then they try to sync, though more than likely you'll only create a new account on one of the two devices at once. So that's not really something to worry about, just make sure this is set to send and receive, both ways. Right, after we verify that everything's set up properly, click save, and our folder's now been added. What we need to do is head across to sync thing on our mobile device and set it up there. So for this, I'll open it up, continue through the quick tutorial, and I'll allow it permission to my storage. And on the next tab here, you'll see permission to your location. Though, if you read the fine text, SyncThing can be configured to synchronize on selected Wi-Fi networks only. 
To do that, it needs to look up the SSID of the currently connected Wi-Fi, also when the app is closed. Therefore, it requires permission to access the location in the background, so information is not used to look up your location, and the only stored information is the Wi-Fi you manually choose to add to the list. No other user data is stored. If you want to trust it, you can click this. Otherwise, if you don't want that feature, it's not really something you need to worry about. Then click Finish. Upon doing so, it'll create some keys and show you this. This program will only sync when the program is open. By default, Android devices and mobile devices will close background programs to save battery. For something that syncs files all the time, this isn't exactly the best. So I would recommend turning it off for SyncThing unless you're really struggling for battery. In which case, you can open up SyncThing every time you need it to sync your passwords folder if you change anything. I'll turn it off on my device, OK, and now I can run freely in the background. To get started, we need to add our main computer. We can head across to Devices and click the plus in the top right. Then we can click the Scan QR Code button and give it permission to record video. Why is this? Well, we can add devices from our desktop or anywhere else by clicking Actions and Show ID to show a big QR code on our screen. If we head across to Settings, followed by Connections, you'll see this here. Enable NAT Traversal, Local Discovery, Global Discovery, and Enable Relaying. By having these bottom two options on, your computer, or SyncThing on it, will talk to the SyncThing servers, allowing other devices in other networks to connect to your main computer after negotiating a path. So if you don't want this, you can turn it off, but for me, I'll leave it on because it doesn't really matter. But before we do get to scanning it, a quick note. SyncThing will try and talk UPnP, otherwise known as some sort of port forwarding, from your computer to your router and other networks, etc., to try and organize a path between your two devices. Something you may need to take note of is that third-party antiviruses could be blocking this program from working properly. You may need to add a specific exception to allow the program through. In my case, I'll just temporarily disable my antiviruses firewall just to set this up and show you. Now that we've gone through that, I'll click Actions, Show ID, then I'll scan it with my phone. After doing so, we'll give it a name, I'll call it, say, Techno PC, and we'll make sure to turn Introducer on so our devices can't talk to each other. If you like, you can also set an IP address here, though I'll leave it as is. I'll click the tick in the top right. This will get our two devices to try and talk to each other. I'll click Add Device. You can set a name, device ID, change sharing options, as well as advanced options up here. What we need to do is head across to the Sharing tab and make sure our KeyPass folder is checked, allowing it to transfer data. After doing so, click Save, and our KeyPass folder is now shared with our mobile device, though not really. We need to add the folder to our device and tell it where it is first. To do so, head across to the Folders tab, click the plus in the top right. We'll add a folder. You can name it whatever you want. For now, I'll just keep it as KeyPass, but the key down here needs to be the same as the one on our computer. Expand the KeyPass folder and check the folder ID here. For me, it's just KeyPass, but for you, it may be some other mumbo jumbo. You can edit it down here. So I'll set it to KeyPass, though without a capital. And for directory, we need to create a folder on our mobile device. I'll create a folder here called, say, KeyPass. OK. And I'll click Select once we're in it. Scrolling down, we'll need to check which computers we want to share it with. In our case, is Techno PC. After leaving everything else as is, Click the tick in the top right, and you should immediately see one out of one file, and our computer shows up to date. It's now sent the entire file. Key pass, 344.2 kilobytes. Heading across to the folder by clicking the folder icon on the right, you can see the file here, 344 kilobytes. Awesome. Let's now open up this file inside of our key pass program on our mobile device. So I'll open up key pass DX, Skip through the tutorial and open an existing database. I'll navigate across to the KeyPass folder, select it, click Allow to allow access to our files, and I'll unlock our database. For this, I'll go ahead and enter the password here, then I'd like to allow fingerprint unlocking. I'll click this up here, scan my fingerprint, and after unlocking, it should go ahead and save the master password with our fingerprint. In the bottom left, we can lock the database, and we can open the settings in the top right. But as you can see already, all of our folders are here, meaning everything synced properly. I'll click the three dots, go to Settings, and inside of here we have a whole bunch of settings. You'll leave the database settings here at the bottom, the same. You won't edit these at all, otherwise they may mess with your computer settings as well. App settings at the very top, 
we can change some settings with the app here, as well as generated password size and some other useful things, though there's not much you'd want to change in here, other than making sure that autosave database is on. Under form filling, you may want to change some settings in here. Click device keyboard settings at the top, enable magic keyboard, OK, and then head into magic keyboard settings. We can customize some things in here with the new keyboard to allow us to enter passwords into applications automatically. We can choose to switch keyboard automatically when we reach a credential screen. I'll turn this to on as well as say auto switch back. Heading back, we can also set up clipboard back again. We can head into advanced unlocking. Inside of here, you can turn on or off biometric unlocking, device credential unlocking to use your phone's password instead, which is pretty dangerous as if someone else knows your password or gets into it through other means, they can get into your passwords folder as well, learning the password to everything you hold dear. So this is pretty dangerous to have on. Biometric also to some extent, though unless something dark happens to you, you probably don't need to worry about that as much. Heading back, we have appearance and inside of here, I'd like to set it to dark mode. We can also customize the app theme, though do note that some of these are paid and only come with the premium version of this application. Though you don't really need premium unless you want specific customizations, etc. Heading back, back again, we're back in our passwords folder. Let's get to testing this out. For now, I'll edit a password on my phone and have it synced to my computer automatically. Because we're going to be editing something on our mobile device, we should go ahead and close KeyPass on our computer. I'll close it on my computer and on my mobile device, I'll go ahead and locate an account that we can edit. Searching for Twitch, you can see my Twitch account over here. The URL is rather messed up. It should just be twitch.tv, hence the icon isn't loading at the top either. I'll edit the account and change the URL to be just HTTPS twitch.tv as such. I'll click the tick and our account should then save into the database. Upon doing so, you should also notice the receiving speed over here inside of SyncThing on my desktop changes as well. So the file's now been updated on my phone and looking at SyncThing on my desktop, it should take just a couple of seconds for it to sync. For some reason, this didn't update until now. I had to disconnect my phone from Wi-Fi, reconnect it, and after doing so, the file synced. As you can see, the file's updated now rather than at 2.08 or whenever I created this. Anyways, now that the file's been updated, I'll open it up, enter my master password here, and searching for Twitch, you can see the URL's been updated here too. Awesome. So syncing from my mobile phone works to here. Let's go ahead and add an image to it. I'll right click, download favicon, and it'll update. Then it'll go ahead and save. These other ones here are also a bit broken. They're all Twitch accounts, so I'll edit them as well. I'll edit entry, set the URL correctly, delete the duplicate entry, for example, and fix the other few here. Then I'll download the favicons for all of them, and they're all updated. Awesome. Now our database should automatically save, so I need to worry about reopening it here. If I look back at SyncThing, you can see upload rate. It's now sent two of the folders to my mobile phone. So I'm checking here and logging in once again, this time searching for Twitch. You can see all of the accounts now have icons, meaning they're updated. Let's go ahead and log into Twitch. With this, I'll head across to twitch.tv. And I don't think I can sign in on the mobile version, so I'll switch to the desktop version, remove the M, and now we're on full-blown Twitch. I'll go ahead and click login in the top right. Then I'll need to enter my username and password. Then I'll need to change my keyboard. For this, I'll pull down from the top, change my keyboard, then click username once again. And at the bottom, I'll click the key, which will take me across to my application here. I'll search for the account in question. I'll select it. And after doing so, we have a bunch of other options here. For the username, I'll click the person icon. Then for the password, I'll click the stars. After doing so, it changes my keyboard back to the default and it's asking for my authenticator. After heading across to the app, copying the code and logging me in, you can see just how simple it is. It works surprisingly well. The only thing you need to remember is to change your keyboard to magic key. There may be easier ways of doing this, though that's about as much as I've seen so far. Sometimes when you open KeyPass DX, you'll see the screen here, click the KDBX for the passwords file, and of course you'll get access to all your passwords once again. Something I did forget to mention throughout that whole recording session last night is how to get SyncThing to start with Windows. Because on your phone, you have to open it up for it to start working. I would assume you'll have to do that at least once after you reboot your phone, 
but on PC, sync thing is not going to work until you start it up at least once and leave it going in the background. Now, of course, having that black window on your screen is going to be rather annoying, especially if it takes up space in your hotbar. But don't worry, there's a solution to that. We can run it as a task or more simply set it up to auto run with our computer, such as programs like Steam, Discord, etc. The absolute simplest way to do that is to navigate across to where it's installed. So for me, it's over here, a project's docs sync thing. I'll go ahead and locate syncthing.exe, right click, and then click create shortcut. Upon doing so, I'll rename this to something just like sync thing, removing the .exe and shortcut. Now let's go ahead and add this to a folder that auto runs when our computer auto runs. The simplest way to get here is to open up your start bar, right click basically any installed program, not Windows App Store programs, hover over more, and then click open file location. Doing this will take you across to C, program data, Microsoft, Windows, start menu, programs more than likely, otherwise just start menu over here. Inside of the start menu programs folder, you'll likely see a startup folder. Any shortcuts that are placed into here will show up in your task manager under the startup tab right over here, and will start up the next time your computer starts up. So all we need to do is move this sync thing shortcut into here. And the next time we start up our computer, sync thing will be launched with it. If I pull across task manager once again and scroll down, you'll see sync thing, open source, continuous file synchronization. Awesome, enabled. Though one thing's wrong with this. When we run this, it'll bring up that same black window. In order to fix that, right click the shortcut, click properties, and inside of here, right under target, we'll be adding something to the end. So hit space at the end, so syncthing.exe space, and then we'll type hyphen no hyphen console, that's one word, space hyphen no hyphen browser. No space there either. So syncthing.exe space hyphen no console space hyphen no browser with a hyphen instead of spaces between no console and no browser. Awesome. Upon clicking apply, continue if prompted for admin, then OK and running the program, you'll see the black window appears and then vanishes very quickly. If we head across to task manager, hit S, we'll jump all the way down to S and there's sync thing over here. Heading across to my browser, I'd be able to log into it and check it out that way. It's that simple. Now that it's running, we don't need to worry about it. I'd recommend bookmarking this page up here by selecting it and dragging it to somewhere like your desktop and naming it say sync thing so you can get back to it later if you'd like to add folders, etc, etc. If you'd like, I can make specific guides on different sections of this tutorial so that you don't have to return to this huge long thing if you'd like to add other folders to it. In fact, I think I'll definitely do that. This is an incredibly long video. Check the description down below for links to a playlist or links to different videos. If for some reason you'd like to restart or stop sync thing entirely, click actions in the top right, followed by shut down or restart. This will close the process itself. So congratulations, you've made it through this pretty long video. There are of course other parts to the series and of course the full guide is a little bit longer than this. Make sure to check the description down below if you'd like to figure out how to get it to sync with your browser as well as how to use the rest of KeyPass on your desktop. You now have the database synced with your mobile device and whenever it's on the same mobile network or is able to reach your computer through any other sequence of networks, your passwords will be synced and that's that. If you'd like to add another laptop or something like that, install KeyPass there, install SyncThing there and link them together. I may get to doing another video like that, and if I do, it'll be linked down in the description below, though I think it'll be more of a general linking two devices together rather than one specifically designed for this. As simply opening up the KeyPass database file is as simple as just double clicking on the file itself. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. My name's been taken over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.